At this point in the tutorial series, you have created controls for a basic arm rig. So we have the IK FK switch for the arm and we have simple FK setup for the fingers. We're almost at the point where we want to skin this now. But first I just want to um, go over how we can create the controls to be a bit more anime proof, add a global control and fix a small issue that we have with one of the controls. So let's address the issue first. If I take the IK handle and move the arm around, and we can rotate it, that works perfectly fine. So does the pole vector. Our switch we know works, but what's happening is it's getting left behind. If you were an animator, you could easily lose this in your scene. Um, so what we want to do is we want this control to follow the wrist so that it's always nearby and the animator can see um, what it controls. So to do this, I'm going to take the left arm control and I'm going to group it. I'm copying the name, pasting, and I'm going to underscore offset group. And then I'm going to center the pivot of that group. And then I'm going to use a point constraint from the wrist. Okay, You can select it here if you can, or you can come in and select it in the outliner, it might be easier. And then I'm going to hold down control and make sure I'm selecting the offset group. In the rigging menu, I'm going to go to constrain point constraint and check the options box. I want to make sure maintain offset is on and then I'm going to hit add. Now when we move the wrist the IKFK switch control is going to always follow wherever it goes in both IK or FK so the animator isn't going to lose this control. And the reason that I've chosen to use a point constraint and not parent is because we don't need the um, controller to rotate as the hand rotates because that would get confusing. So we've just used a point so that only follows the translate values of the wrist. So that's what we've fixed. Next thing is we're going to create um, a global controller. So we need to create the control for that first and as we've done many times in this series I'm going to use the EP curve tool. I'm going to make sure in my tool settings that is set to linear and then I'm going to draw out a four kind of arrows pointing in four directions holding X to snap to my grid and I'm just going to go and quickly draw this out and if I do it right first time I'll be very shocked. Okay, press enter. And um, once I've created it, I'm gonna name it global underscore CTRL for control. And then I'm going to center the pivot. Okay. If you center the pivot and the pivot isn't quite in the middle, it means that it's not equal um, the way you've drawn it. So you can just right click control vertex and use it X again to snap and adjust um, and make your shape so that the center of the pivot is right in the center. I managed to draw it correctly, which is great. I'm going to hold down X and just snap that to the origin. I'm also going to scale this up. Once I'm happy with its position, I'm going to go to Modify, Freeze to the Transformations, and I'm also going to quickly delete the history. So that's the global control. When we move this, we want everything uh, with our arm to move with it. So to do that, we need to take all of our controllers. So have a look. So that's controls from there to there. Okay, I'm going to group this and name it controls. 
and I'm going to place that middle mouse drag onto the global controller. Okay. Next I'm going to take all of my joints, including the I key and F key. I'm going to group that. I'm going to call this skeleton. Okay. And I'm going to place that inside the global controller as well. I have my arm geometry here, which I'm going to leave outside at the moment. And so now when I select the global control and move it around, I have the ability to move around the whole of the arm um, in both FK and IK. We've made a global control. We have all our controls set up now for a very basic arm rig. What we can do now is make it a little bit more animator proof. And what I mean by that is we can make it so that the animator can't accidentally keyframe on something we don't want them to keyframe. And we can also hide attributes we don't want them to animate on our specific control. So if we take this control first, the IKFK switch, we don't want the animator to be able to move it, or rotate it or scale it. We just want them to be able to use the IKFK switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Translate X, holding down the mouse button, drag to select all of the Translate, Rotate and Scale attributes, right click and go to Lock and Hide Selected. And when I click this, all of those attributes disappear, we can't see them in the channel box and when I try to use my Move, Scale or Rotate tool, it's greyed out, it won't let me do anything. The only thing that an animator can now do when they select this control is use the IKFK switch or the visibility. If we go and find this in the outliner, we have an offset group. So if I press up on my keyboard, okay, I'm now selected the offset group. So what we're going to do now is remove all of the ability of, for the animator to place a keyframe on the offset group as well because we don't want them to accidentally have pick walked up to the con to the offset group and keyframe on that instead so i'm gonna with the offset group selected drag all of these again right click lock and hide selected We need to go through and do the same for all of our controls. So for our finger joints, we can actually drag and select multiple controls and do this all at the same time. So if I select all of the finger controls, I don't want my animator to be able to scale them. So I'm gonna right click on the scale, lock and hide selected. Same for the IK, scale, lock and hide selected. I want my animator to be able to move it. I want them to be able to rotate it. For the um, pole vector control for the elbow, um, we only need translate. So I'm gonna drag and rotate and scale, right click, lock and hide selected. Let's switch to FK and with our FK we only want rotation values so I'm going to drag and select the three translates, hold control, drag and select the scale, right click, lock and hide selected. I could have done all three at once, I'll just do the last two now, translate, scale, right click lock and hide selected. We remove the ability for the animator to animate on the offset group. So we are going to select all of the offset groups in our scene and do the same. A quick way to do that is if we come up to the search bar in the outliner, I'm going to put an asterisk, which means that it doesn't matter what, inf what information is before. I'm just interested in 
Maya selecting everything that says offset group. I've searched for the offset group and if I hold shift and click the little plus icon, Maya is going to reveal everything underneath the control group. And I'm just going to go through and select the offset group, control click the next one and come through here and select all of the offset groups that we've created during our rigging. And then if I get rid of this last one, because we've already done that one, I'm going to drag and select the translate, rotate and scale values, right click, lock and hide selected. Now we've managed to do that on all the offset groups quite quickly. We can get rid of that uh, with your whole shift and close that. So that's it. That's our rig done. We have the controls that we need. We're now going to be able to move on to the final step which is skinning and painting the weights.